and welcome to the Mumversation Club, the podcast born out of the idea that every mum needs a tribe. I'm Claire Strong. And I'm Christina Struckmeyer. We're two moms just like you navigating the chaotic, challenging, and often isolating world of motherhood. Now, it's often said that it takes a village to raise a child, but we want to know, where the F is that village? Yeah, Claire, it's a question that resonates with so many of us who find ourselves raising children, managing careers, and trying to maintain our own identities, often with a sense of isolation. But we're here to remind you that you're not alone. The Bumbersation Club is your village, your tribe, somewhere that you're always going to feel understood, appreciated, and valued. We believe that by sharing our own experiences, successes, and struggles, we can create a virtual village for all you amazing mamas out there. So join us every week for a real, raw, and relatable discussion about all aspects of motherhood, including the things that you just can't talk about to anyone else. So if you've ever asked yourself, where the F is the village, then you found your tribe. Let's get into it. Hi, Christina. Hey, Claire. How's it going? It's going good. Better than yesterday. <laughs> Why? What happened yesterday? <laughs> oh my gosh, girl. I had the most craziest day yesterday. It was a piss poor day, like actually, like in <laughs> What happened? So I woke up yesterday and I was like, I'm going to get my shit together today. I'm going to wake up early. I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to like drink a cup of coffee. Like, you know, one of those days where you're just like, today is the day I have it together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ha, ha, ha. I wake up. (laughs) I do all the things, and then I um, I hear my daughter, Rennie, cry, who's the little one in the crib still, mm-hmm. and she's starting to kind of like eh, whine a little bit, and then I go, okay, well, I better get the older one up first. Mm-hmm. So I go into her room, and she immediately goes, time to get dressed, which is not her normal response to waking up, okay? Like, normally, okay. it's like, I don't want to wake up, and then she'll like giggle with me, and we like have this little tug of war with the covers. It's mm-hmm. a whole thing. But today she bolted up, yesterday she bolted up and she was like, I don't, I want to get dressed. Like, yay, let's get dressed. And I'm like, <gasps> what's going on? And oh, um, I realized she peed the bed. Oh, and so uh, she was embarrassed and she didn't want to like, you know, oh, acknowledge it. So I'm like, yeah. okay, no big deal. Like accidents happen. I'm like sharing with mm-hmm. her, like mommy has had that happen to her before. Everybody pees the bed sometimes. Like I'm trying to like share with her, even though it's been a long time since I've peed the bed. <laughs> For our listeners, that was a pretty recent thing with you, but okay, you clarified. I mean, I was pregnant all of 2022, so like, no judgment. (laughs) But so I'm like getting her settled, and I'm like trying to calm her down, and then I go in the back, I go in the other room to get the baby, Mm -hmm. and not a single minute goes by with me walking in, being like, I smell piss. She also peed the bed. She went through her little pamper and she was just not caring at all. She was like jumping around. She thought it was so fun. And I was like, Alex, I need reinforcements. Like shit's going down. Oh no. (laughs) And it's just the amount of laundry. That's what it is. It's so much laundry. And then when it gets on stuff that you can't wash very easily as well. Yeah. So we, we had a mattress pad that protected the mattress on Stella's bed because a long time ago, she used to pee her pants sometimes every once in a while, like, as most kids do. Sure, and yeah. um, I, a long time ago, noticed there was a rip in it and didn't replace it mm. and because she hadn't peed her pants in a long time. And yes. so um, it was ripped right where she was. So we had to oh, clean the mattress. No. So oh, hang on a second. How do you clean a mattress? Like, what do you oh, do? it's a whole process. You have like um, the carpet deodorizer that you use for pet stains and like you have to yeah. vacuum it. And, and then also our washing machine is not capable of handling large um, comforters. Okay. So my husband took um, our quilt to the laundromat and it was like a, just it was a whole process to like handle. Yeah. So that was my morning yesterday. So today no one has pissed their pants. Um, outside of the baby's diaper, obviously, and okay. it's, it's great, including myself. I haven't peed my pants yet, so oh my go. god, it's just a win all around. Then today's a great day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great day, and you know, oh it's just one god. of the many days as a stay-at-home mom. Like I, as a working mom, you handle that too. But like, I'm like, this is going to be my whole day today. Like, I'm yeah. not going to be able I to do anything it. else and, but and this. Some, yeah, and when something like that happens, it kind of sets the tone for the day. Even if you try and have a good attitude about it. 
It kind of does. And inevitably, there are other things that seem to go wrong in the same day too. So I hear you. I'm I'm there a lot, not necessarily with the exact thing you've been dealing with because, yeah. you know, we're a little little older in this house. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> although I've got dogs, so they, they kind of make up for the lack of looking yes. in the house. So um, anyway, but I want to know what we're talking about today because this should be a good episode. Yeah. Oh man. Well, we're talking about something. So as, as all of you guys know by now, I am an avid TikTok user. I love the TikTok talks and I share the TikTok talks with Claire when they're relevant or when they're like interesting or funny. Um, mm-hmm. I spam people with TikToks to be honest. Um, and I came across a, a TikTok that was um, sharing kind of some feedback about a recent podcast by the podcaster slash money guru, um, Dave Ramsey. Mm -hmm. So for those unfamiliar, Dave Ramsey has been around for a really long time. I actually have one of his books in my library. I I followed it to get out of debt. He had um, this book called The Money Makeover. Uh And it basically, his whole spiel is like, when you're drowning in debt, here are some baby steps on how to get you out. And so okay. he has these books, he has these courses. And then in addition to that, he has a show, like a podcast, where he takes mm-hmm. callers and he listens to their money issues and then mm-hmm. provides like feedback and advice on his show. Hmm. So um, I was, I, I'm familiar with the podcast, I actually used to listen. And on TikTok, there is a large audience of, of women specifically, but mothers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who are balking at his most recent advice. So mm-hmm. um, a caller called in and I mean, we'll have to link the video in our show notes. Like, so that way yeah. you guys get the real deal, yeah. but basically called in and was talking about him and his wife and his wife was a, uh, a, a student, I believe who, she was going to med school and doing her residency. So she was taking a bit of a financial cut in like her income to do that work. Mm-hmm. And he was working and he, I think she was making 70,000 a year and he's making 110,000 a year. So they make okay. 180,000 mathing. So her, her, and her, her, her and her husband was that? Her and her husband together. Okay. And so they're talking to Dave Ramsey about like finances and stuff. And he was like, well, explain to me why you can't live on $180,000. And mm-hmm. he explained that they have two children and that those children are in childcare. Yeah. And th- this brought on a conversation that me, you, and so many other moms were enraged by because yeah. um, Dave Ramsey shared that he didn't believe the cost of childcare he was paying was reasonable, hmm. which was, I believe, 25000 a year, something like mm-hmm. that. And, um, and he has two kids. So like, that's not unreasonable at all. So you and I are like, yeah, that's pretty standard. Yeah. But apparently yeah. Dave Ramsey is not up to date with that. Mm. And him and his co-host went on to share like tips that were not functional um, with that person, including get your kid in a free summer camp, which as a mother. <laughs> so anyways, me and you have had the eye roll express over here about yeah. this advice. And yeah. the internet is having a field day. They are sharing like all sorts of real facts with this person. But I wanted to talk about it here because on the Momversation mm-hmm. Club, we are a show that gets real raw and authentic when it comes to motherhood. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's talk. So I, I've laid all of this in front. What is your mm-hmm. um, reactions? Because I know you watched the video. You got took in the content as well. Yes, I did. So I think my immediate reaction was how out of touch this guy is. He's out of touch with what is real life for parents. And childcare, especially if you've got preschool aged kids, is the bulk of your income. I actually just want to, um, I just want to share something with you actually. So this is from the Annie E. Casey Foundation. Okay. So, So I'm just gonna read you a little bit from this article. Even if parents can find a childcare opening near their home, they often can't pay for it. The average annual national cost of childcare for one child, this is one child back in 2021, was $10,600, okay? 10,000, that's for one child. That's a tenth of a married couple's median income and more than one third of a single parent's income, according to one analysis. And so, you know, that guy is 
$25,000 that he mentioned um, is kind of, you know, an accurate reflection. And the other thing is, so there, let's talk about the factors that go into this. So yeah, yeah. So, but that data yeah. of like the average cost, that's the average. Yeah. So that means in some places that are higher income places, yeah. it's going to be more. It's going to be much more. Yes. And that's if you can even find a center that is in your area and mm -hmm. has slots. Yeah. So that's another thing. So you go ahead and go on, but I just wanted to clarify that that is an average and not the exact cost because if you break that down, that's about mm -hmm. a little under 900 if I'm doing my math mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. a month, mm -hmm. um, which if you have an infant, it's going to be more. Mm -hmm. one child. But if you have a baby, it's more expensive versus like yeah. a child age that's in um, school or a toddler. Mm -hmm. Dave's not aware, I guess, that there's different costs for different types of care. Yeah. For sure. Um, and there was someone else on TikTok that took this topic on and, um, I, you know, maybe we can tag her in this actually. She made some really good points. And, and one of them was that, um, you know, some people may, may say, well, get a nanny and nannies are more expensive. I mean, your traditional childcare, um, is, is, is really the, the general, option that's available um, for most people, but at what cost? I mean, you know, if you're working a 40 plus hour week and most of your income or a huge chunk of your income is going on childcare, then you've got to weigh up whether it's worth you even doing that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you know, some of us, I was lucky enough, not with my first child, because I was in this situation with my first child. With my second child, my dad had retired. And at that time, I was living, um, I was actually living with my parents. And so he would help with the childcare with my youngest. But that's, that's not, you know, a lot of us don't have that. I don't have that now. I live in a different country to my family. And so yeah. I'm back in the situation. Yes, my kids are older, but I have to have someone at both ends of the day to sort out my girls, to take them to school, to take them to whatever it is they're doing, just to be around. They're not at the age yet where they can do that. And so it's, um, I, I think it was very um, out of touch. Um, it was a very out of touch reaction. Um, by, yeah. by, and I, I understand why mums in particular were kind of outraged. Um, it's just, it's not, you know, his reaction to me, smacked of someone who um, isn't living this life. Yeah, yeah. Any any mother right now, whether you're a working mom or you are a stay at home mom, talking to mm -hmm. mothers who are in it, um, mm -hmm. they know the cost of childcare is going up, up, up. And yeah. not only that, but since the pandemic, um, mm -hmm. and I experienced this as well um, with with my older daughter. Um, she was in childcare during the beginnings of the pandemic. We had because mm -hmm. she was in half day preschool, mm -hmm. and I worked a nine to five job. I had to yep. every day on my lunch pick her up from preschool and take her to a childcare center, um, an in home, and mm -hmm. pay that person for the rest of the day. Because what am I to do if I'm working full time? Yep. You need care for them. Yep. When the pandemic hit, her income was severely, severely affected because she could not have the children in care. Everybody shut down. And it was all that she could to stay open during that time. And a lot of child cares did not. They mm -hmm. shut down. And those child care centers are no longer around. And because of that, there's been a large, a large amount of children who need care and not a whole lot of childcare centers that have availability to so the point where I actually have a daughter who's a year and a half almost, not even yet. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at preschools right now to apply to for when she hits preschool age at three, because we mm -hmm. know there's only so many spots. Yeah. And so it's just, it's a challenge. It's a challenge if you can even find childcare and then how are you to budget or negotiate the rates? You don't. These are the rates. The rates are the rates. You can either afford yep. it or you can't. Um, so yeah. And then, and then there's the other piece of um, the, the, if you have more than one child, like that, yes. that cost is per kid. So that man who called in two kids, 25,000, I mean, yeah. That's like what twelve hundred dollars a person. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm doing math in my head right now, but yeah. um, that's perfectly normal in line with the average amount. So yeah, he's paying quite a bit of his income on childcare, and that's during the year. He also expressed during the summer. Yes. What so do you do with your kids? Well, and just to clarify, I think you meant twelve thousand a year, not twelve. 
1200 you were working you're right out. you're right sorry yeah i was gonna say no we wish it was only uh no, no, no. 1200 uh, like a month sorry yeah yeah um so and like you say so that's taking care of term time but what happens in the holidays i mean kids in american schools generally get about 10 weeks off in the summer um i mean what where does the kid go during that time mm -hmm. where do children go similarly or they're know, sick and or they're sick um i mean it's it's yeah it's an extreme financial burden for parents and i think what's really got people so wound up is just how how out of touch this yeah. guy clearly was in his reaction and but you know let's look at the positives it has highlighted this issue it sent you know TikTok and social media into a bit of a frenzy over this and and so this is a good thing because we're talking about it here today um and it's it's something that a lot of parents it just cripples them and so this yeah. is a this is a real thing that you know aside from your mortgage this is what parents are having to spend a big chunk of their income on um yeah and yeah. it's shifting the way that mothers um, navigate their career choices and mm. the things that they want to do. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of women. I actually went on my Facebook and I pulled mm. our listeners, you know, a lot of the friends and family that listen to us mm -hmm. and asked the stay at home moms, like sound off, like, tell me what's been the best thing about it. What's been the hardest, yeah. um, all of the things. And a lot of people said that they had careers that they loved, but that just didn't make sense to go to yeah. work because yeah. all of the money they'd be making would go to the daycare. And yeah. so they decided to stay home, but that's at the detriment for many people of like their career advancements. Because if you're staying home, you're not in the field during that time. You're losing um, the time and longevity that, you know, people and your male counterparts aren't having to deal with for mm -hmm. the most part. There are stay at home dads, but it's less popular of an option. Typically, if you're in a situation with you and your spouse and someone needs to stay home with the kids, it mm -hmm. often will fall on the female, it will fall on yeah. the woman in the situation. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It's still disproportionately impacting women um, as opposed to men. And like you say, um, you know, if it doesn't make financial sense for you to go to work because childcare costs are so astronomical and you make the choice to stay at home, then the consequences are, and it's unfair, it shouldn't be like this, but it's reality. The consequences are you are potentially taking a, a step back career-wise. And, and aside from the, you know, potential career progression and the, the, the earnings and, and all of that that you're sacrificing, let's talk a little bit about the emotional impact on people that actually choose to stay at home because of the financial situation it just doesn't make sense for them to have childcare because you know your self-confidence can take a hit because you're used to this particular environment where it's all about you know you you're around adults all the time maybe you've yeah. got feedback from your boss and you know you're seen you, you're, you're seen to be doing an important job um you may be getting compliments because you've done something really well um and you have a routine and you have to get dressed to go to work and all yeah. of those things and then that's taken away from you. And sometimes it can be very hard to transition into being a stay-at-home mom. Yeah, really yeah. I I pulled a lot of different voices for this, which was really mm -hmm. wonderful how many people yeah. showed up yeah. to, to, to answer. A lot of them in DMs. Yeah. And um, one person who um, had that take of like, this has been a sacrifice, has said, mm -hmm. you know, when they were a stay-at-home mom, they weren't feeling super motivated and that they were contributing yeah. to something outside of their family and that part of their identity was to give to society and contribute to society. And she felt like she was just a mom and it didn't fulfill her in the same way as it did when she was in her career. Um, you know, I think that there's two sides to the stay at home mom coin, right? Like there's people like myself, I've had the privilege to be able mm -hmm. to stay at home and not make that decision out of finances, but out of just what I want for my family at this moment in time. Yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of people that do choose that. There's people that choose to be a stay at home mom, but mm -hmm. there's this other half because of this entirety um, of the situation with childcare that are now choosing this route, mm -hmm. but having that same type of thought process behind it. And it's mm -hmm. hard, Claire. Like I have transitioned. I mean, yeah. 
and it has been difficult. And I actually have a lot of support behind me and Mm. it's still really hard. What are you finding the hardest about being a stay at home mom? I mean, I think one of the biggest things, and this is something that was echoed by a lot of responses is you're kind of always on the clock. Like there's never a, okay, (laughs) I'm done being a mom now. I'd like to clock out for lunch. Like, you know, Um, and with young kids, you know, we get uh, nap breaks, but Mm -hmm. there's this expectation. And again, a lot of people echoed this thought of Mm -hmm. like that being time to take care of all the other responsibilities that you feel responsible for. So for instance, if my kid takes a nap, which is not a given. Like sometimes she'll skip that shit. Yeah. And I'm like, why yeah. have you done this to me? Know. Yeah, yeah. I remember those um, days. Or you're like driving in the car and you see them yes. snooze and you're like, wow, ah, like you're trying to wake them up. Uh, <laughs> like oh, slamming yeah. on my brakes, like yeah. trying to jerk her, like <laughs> stay awake. <laughs> um, but like, you know, if you, you don't get those breaks like you would, because when they are napping, you're like, oh shit, I've got to do the laundry. I've got to yes. do the dishes. I've got to do all these things that this little person won't let me do during the day. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's this expectation of like, I'm, I'm responsible for this cause I'm the one at home. Mm. So that's been hard for uh, me and so many other people is the lack of um, clocking off, the lack of breaks, the lack of Mm -hmm. um, space from your job, you know? For me, it's been the lack of appreciation. Mm. Because I don't feel that we're appreciated inside the home. I don't feel we're appreciated by our kids. And okay, you can say they're kids. I get it. But also husbands, partners. I think there still is a societal attitude and a male attitude predominantly that doesn't put the value that is deserved on motherhood. So Mm. by that, I mean that, you know, because being a mom is not a paid job, because we're not earning money, if that's what we're only doing, I think men in particular can have the view that, well, what, what do you do? You don't, you don't work. So because you don't work, you know, you're not as, I'm the one that's working hard because I'm the one that's earning money. You've got all the time in the world because you're just at home. And I still yeah. think, I still think that society has that default setting surrounding the issue of stay at home mums. We're not valued. And because there isn't a monetary value associated with the work that we do, then that in that can diminish our value in the eyes of others, particularly, you know, the men in our lives and society as, as a whole. And so that for me is, has been very frustrating. Um, yeah. you know, I've been a home mum, I've been a working mum, um, I've been a working single parent, I've done the, the, all, all the things. And one thing I will say about even now, so so now I'm much more in control of my own schedule, which I love because, you know, we're, we're entrepreneurs now, we have the podcast, we're, we're doing our own thing. I'm no longer chained to a newsroom 10 hours a day, which historically I was because I'm, I'm a journalist. Um, so that's great. But because I'm not physically in an office 10 hours a day, I think my husband still wonders some days what it is I'm doing because I haven't, I haven't left at 7 a.m. in work clothes and I haven't returned at 7 p.m. and had a really long day at the office. Well, no, that's because I've been running kids around, sorting out dogs and working and eating lunch stood up because I don't have time for lunch because I've got to get this, you know, something done for work. And then I've got to go and get the kids from school again, then do the ballet run and then cook everything. And then, you know, maybe try and fit in half an hour so I can actually do a bit of Pilates and and do something for me if I'm lucky. Um, And so... I think I think there's that as well, Christina, that because we're not physically leaving the home to go to a, an, an office, um, then again, it doesn't class as, as work in some people's eyes. Yeah. And it's interesting because, you know, you mentioned that men tend to do that. Mm-hmm. But in my experience, yeah. it's been women. Like, it's women. interesting. I've, I've experienced women kind of looking down on the stay at home mom thing Mm. as like, you're just a mom. And also you have more time, right? I'll get feedback from someone of like, Oh, surely like you can do the extra PTA, blah, 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 blah. Cause you're a stay at home mom. Like you have time. 
Huh. It's like this, like, um, it, like I'm not, like I'm just sitting here eating bonbons. Like I've got yeah, shit to yeah. do as well. Like, yeah. I'm yeah. not just because I'm not in an office. Like you said, I'm also like working here and it's, it's really hard work. And you know, one of the moms, um, that shared like her thoughts about being mm-hmm. a stay at home mom, one of the hardest things she said was that there's a learning curve on motherhood and that just like at a job, when you first start it, there's a little bit of grace for yourself. Like, okay, well, I'm new to this data entry job and like, I'm not going to get everything right. So my first 90 days are really just about learning. And you like, you kind of do that. And then there's the annual performance review. And like, there's all these things to help shape you. Yeah. Um, when you're a stay-at-home mom, you're just going for it. There is yeah. no, like you're on the clock and you are expected to do the job that you need to do um, yeah. and not mess up because there's a human on the other side yeah. of this. Uh, um, and she said that she had unrealistic expectations of um, I, that thinking she'd be good at it without learning how to be a stay at home mom. And it took her some time to like get into the routine of that and feel validated in that space. So kind of two parts response to that is that it's not always the men. Sometimes it's women that are like mm-hmm. doing that to other women. And then the other thing is, is like the stay at home mom piece is kind of like a job where you are nine to five, mm-hmm. but you're not leaving. The learning curve is still there. Like it's it's still something you have to start getting good at. Like it's not like you're immediately designed to be this amazing stay at home mom, like deluxe over here. Um, things are going to be a little messy for a little bit. So let's just talk about that. What job on this planet do you know that would not give you some form of training? I mean, you know, whatever job, whatever field, whether it's cleaning, whether it's, you know, hotel work, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, you go through a training period. They don't just throw you on the job the second that you enter the, you know, through the door. Oh, hi, morning. Okay, so you are now doing this job. And and you're also, because you're new and because you're training, you're usually given a bit of a, a grace period to mess up. And it's oh, it's okay, I'm learning. Oh, no, that's fine. You know, you'll get it. Just keep going. Well, as a stay-at-home mum, there's no room for error. Mm-hmm. And, and, and let me tell you now, the only feedback you generally get, or certainly my experience, is not positive. You get feedback when things have gone wrong. No one's saying to you, oh, my God, you did such a great day today. You didn't lose your temper. Both kids are at school. The house looks pretty good. You walk the dogs. And oh my God, you made dinner. This is like, this is amazing. You did great. Oh no, all of that's expected. But if you drop balls, if the house isn't, you know, nice, the dogs haven't been walked, there's, you know, everything's upside down, people having meltdowns all over the show, then, it, you know, it's a big fat F <laughs> as far yeah. as how, how you've been graded. So it's it's tough. It really is it tough. Is. It is. And I think that uh, maybe we should be the ones to say that to ourselves. Like the end of the day, do a little check in for yourself. Like, all right, Claire, what went well today? <laughs> what, do, what are our areas yeah. of improvement? <laughs> yeah. well, let's I start mean, with the positive. So what, what did you do really good today? Okay, so you didn't have a meltdown. That's fantastic. What could you have improved? Okay, you forgot to collect the kids from school. That's okay. You forgot that it was early pickup. No problem. Um, just for next time. <laughs> I'm talking about myself here. Yeah, yeah, your self-talk. Like, I, I think that we should be our own performance review each day and kind of help ourselves get through that. But yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, again, um, going back to our original conversation about this whole mm-hmm. Dave Ramsey thing, like, yeah, you know, we're talking about these very real costs of childcare. And why yes. do we pay that much? Because we value the way our children spend their days. Like Mm -hmm. we want them to be in an enriching environment. We want them to socialize. We want them to do all of these things. Mm -hmm. Well, flipping it and having your wife stay at home and do all of those things. Why do we not have the same value? Like you're putting the person who knows your child the most in charge of your child. We're not paying this person, but we kind of are because we're paying them for their time. Like there's a trade-off. When you're not paying a childcare worker to take care of your kids, you're saving that money. So really, mom math, you're earning that money for the family because yeah, you don't have to spend it. Like that, though, does it? Because well, no. it doesn't work like that in my house. No. I don't know if it does in yours. But you know, if you would say, okay, so we're actually saving this amount per month because I am the childcare, and that oh, by the way, that's also impacting uh, my ability to, if I want to, 
or if I need to go out and get a, 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 a more standard job. Um, but there's no, you know, there's no conversations. I mean, it, you know, can you imagine realistically if I were to approach my husband tonight and say, okay, darling, so I've worked it out. So I've done it. I've just done some quick math, as he likes to say. <laughs> so by my quick math, and um, this is what we save ourselves every month. So um, can I have that money, please? Because that's the money that I, I'm, I'm worth and I, and I'm, I'm owed for all my time and labor. He would be like, are you having an absolute laugh? Uh, no. <laughs> He would because society doesn't still doesn't value the role of a stay at home mom like it should. No, no, especially if you're if you're a stay at home mom, that is I think there's also different types, right? Um, There's the stay at home mom that maybe is in the thick of it and has a bunch of children that are young and they're just they're lucky if they put pants on that day. Right. Like it's shit is hard. They're in the trenches. And then there's other stay-at-home moms where they're they're venturing out and they're taking their kids to the library and mommy and me, mm-hmm. all this stuff. So like, yeah, I mean, even more so, like if I were to hire a nanny to come mm-hmm. clean and take care of my house and take my child to all these different things and enrich their lives and spend uninterrupted eye contact with them, no screens, like that would be a lot of freaking money because that person would yeah. have to work with no breaks. Yes. Yes. That's a yeah, lot. So yeah, it's, um, it's not like, oh yeah, she's just a stay at home mom. Like, no, we're actually, it's quite a lot. And, and again, not everyone chooses this because they want to, even though, um, you know, we have children and we want to be with them. Um, you know, some people also love their career and have to pause it because of this financial piece. And I don't know how people are honestly doing it for those who need to have a two income household to just survive. Like Mm -hmm. what's happening with those kids? Like, are they just being ousted to a neighbor? Like it it worries me. Like I think about areas that have childcare deserts where there's, there is no childcare that's Mm -hmm. licensed. Um, Mm -hmm. Where do those kids go? Because they can't take them to work. They're working jobs that they can't bring them to and they have to work two jobs to make it. Yeah. It's just wild. I think we're going to see a lot of repercussions of like mm-hmm. this financial crisis of like child cares and not having it subsidized. Um, we're going to see the effects of that as we move forward um, with the kids that come out of this. So, um, yeah. But I did want to share some positive stuff. Okay. Um, and some it. things. So, <clears throat> oh, we're doing the jumper thing again. By the way, I that's- am. That's called a jumper in England. And I said okay. to someone the other day, I like your jumper. And he looked, he did like a double take of what he was wearing. And he went, you mean my sweater? I was like, oh, yeah, your sweater, your jumper. It's like a jumper is something totally different, Claire. A jumper is like um, an outfit that's like a onesie for us. Like, oh, um, you know, like overalls suit. that like, you know. You call it a jumpsuit or something yeah, like that. A jumper. a jumper is a sweater, yeah. Okay, for those who can't see, I'm I'm wearing a sweater, but again, not wearing it correctly. I'm just kind of, it just keeps my arms warm. <laughs> um, thank you. But um, so I like I said, I've I've been doing the stay at home mom thing for a little bit now, and like I said, learning curve. You know, it's the first month was shit. Okay, like it was not good. Um, I wasn't getting dressed. I was like, my routine was off. I didn't feel yeah. a lot of validation from it. Like it was just, it was hard. And I was yeah. just focusing on taking care of the child. Like this mm-hmm. child is taken care of nothing else. Okay, nothing else I can layer on. But since then, I've come up with a couple tips for yeah. how to survive and keep your sanity as a stay at home mom. Okay. And so I want to share this yeah. with you guys. Yeah. Let's hear it. Cause you are in the thick of that right now. I'm in you? the thick of it. You've got littles as well. And that is, that is a full on stage. The toddler stage is a lot. Yeah. Okay. So go it's on. Tough. Share, share how you're surviving and, and not losing your sanity. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, well, I don't most days. <laughs> most days. Um, my number one tip for stay at home moms is when your stay at home mom Every day can look the same. Like every day is like Groundhog's Day. You wake up and you do the exact same things. You clean the exact same messes. You do everything exactly the same. And then somehow you wake up the next day and it's exactly like the day before. Like it's like nothing happened. Like nothing existed. Like all of that work that you did yesterday evaporated. Um, So you have to build a routine that allows you to section off what day is what. Okay. 
-hmm. So for me, what that looks like is on certain days of the week, I do things to leave the house and go outside (laughs) with the child. Okay. So for instance, Mondays is a gymnastics day. I take my oldest daughter to gymnastics on Mondays. Tuesdays is library day with the littlest one. And we do like a little program at the library for like little tiny readers. Um, Wednesday's my down day. It's where I get things done around the house that need to get done because shit hits the fan after the weekend's been gone. Um, Thursday is a play group that I do in town. And then Fridays I work, we do this recording on Fridays. Mm -hmm. And so every day I wake up and I have some sort of hallmark to ground me into that day and go, okay, today is this day. Yes. So you have a structure. I like that you have a structure and each day has a different purpose. So yes, where you may be doing the same tasks over and over, but you're still able to differentiate between the days because you have different activities, for example, on different days. So I like that. That's really helpful. Yeah, it's helped me. And if you, yeah. if that, if that feels overwhelming for someone, baby step it. Like maybe yeah. um, do theme nights for your dinner, meatless Mondays, taco Tuesday. Like figure mm-hmm. out ways to make each day a little different because mm-hmm. otherwise you feel like you're losing your damn mind. I mean, most of the tasks I do are clean up the playroom. Oh, all of the blocks been dumped again. Clean up the playroom. <laughs> oh, look, all the blocks are out again. Clean up the playroom. Like it's just. <laughs> Oh my it's, God. it's freaking yeah. insanity. I feel like um, I look around and like the same, I just sweep the floor and now the floor is dirty again. It just, yeah. everything yeah. you can, my husband comes home after a long day out yeah. and nothing looks different, but yeah. everything has been cleaned at least three or four times. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I tell you the other thing that I remember from that stage, especially before the girls started school, the weekends can just become the same as the weekdays you don't get that Friday feeling because, nope. well, Saturday and Sunday is the same as Tuesday and Wednesday for me. We do the same thing. There's no lay in. There's no, you know, we just do this every single day. And so um, I remember that from that stage when I was in the, you know, staying at home with with little kids stage before they yeah. went to school particularly. Yeah, I was like, oh, I used to really love Fridays. Now it's like Friday, what day, who cares? It's <laughs> It's the same. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited for everyone else that is into their Friday. Like, I'm like, yeah. yay, Friday. But it's the same yeah, yeah. thing for me. Like, I'm like, okay, we won't have school drop off tomorrow. Like, that's the biggest change. Yeah. 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 So, no, um, I mean, yeah. I, I think once your kids get older, even if you are still in the stay at home mom um, phase, I think you do start reclaiming your weekends because, well, not necessarily reclaiming claiming them, but actually looking forward to them because you don't have the whole school rigmarole so yeah exactly yeah. exactly so um in that same vein of like creating um day structures um mm-hmm. my tip number two is to just um put yourself together a little bit hmm. like get dressed you know like <laughs> the first the first What's few months of my stay-at-home momness was like pajama pants like I would not I would go all day and at the end of the day it was like time to change in pajamas and I'd be like I'm already ready. Look at me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is, which is kind of, you know, comfy and convenient, but then it's not, I, I think you're right. I think if you can try and just, you know, put some regular clothes on again, yeah. going back to that, making a, a, you know, giving your day identity basically. So this is what we do in the morning. Exactly. That's for the evening. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be extreme, right? Like I am a big fan of dry shampoo and mom oh, buns. Like, it is not a situation where you're walking onto a fashion show, but yeah. like, you know, like throw a brush through it, like yeah. wear something yeah. that is not pajamas, like change mm-hmm. from your slouchy pajama pants to your slouchy daytime pants. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, just look put together, not for other people, but for yourself, yeah. because it makes you feel like, you know, you're still a person, like you're not this like mama slave that you're you're dealing with this situation of yeah. like I want snacks I need this I want to clean yeah. up this blocks you know like she, yeah. she it can be like working for a little dictator um and and exactly. having that little thing for myself even if it's just like take a shower that's a big deal around here for me to be able to take a shower and blow dry yes. my hair and and do yes. the thing yeah so just off the back of that my tip would be kind of similar to what you've just said, just try and take half an hour for yourself in the day. For me, yeah. I would take that half an hour to either go for a walk or do Pilates because that's that's my love. That makes me feel good, you know, mentally. 
Um, and it made, at that time, I wasn't even going out to a studio to work out. I was just doing it in my house, you know, just on a yoga mat. You can get loads of different, um, you know, YouTube yeah. videos and stuff. So it's easy to do from your home. But whatever it is that just makes you feel better mentally, just try and take half an hour a day to do it. Whatever it yeah. is, that you do. it doesn't have to be at a set time if that's not how your your day rolls. But I used to actually do my Pilates around 8.30 at night when the kids were very little because I'd have them both in bed by that time. And that was like my time. So from like 8.30 till nine, I was, you know, I put some classical music on and did Pilates and I felt so much better mentally. Otherwise, yeah. it's really easy to lose yourself. And that's not a place you want to be because at some point, this stage is not going to last forever. And when you move out of this phase and onto the next phase of, of life, however that looks, you're going to need to to know who you are. You're going to need you because you're not always going to be at home looking after these these littles or in my my case, my teenagers who are still very needy. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, taking 30 minutes sounds for a lot of stay-at-home moms who are, like, in the thick of it, like, maybe that's mm -hmm. not even possible. Like I said, like, sometimes they don't take naps. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just have a day like that. And um, a tip for that, and that was, like, one of my tips is take the break. Mm -hmm. But if there is no break, like, create a break. <laughs> and so what that looks like for me is um, my child, when she's in her car seat, she's safe. Okay. Yeah. She's strapped yep. in. I make sure she has her little sippy cup. She's got a mm -hmm. toy. If mm -hmm. she's not napping, I still mm -hmm. need my break. And so what I'll do is I'll strap her in and I'll drive myself to Starbucks and Perfect. I'll take a little bit of me yeah. time. Perfect. She's strapped in. Um, yeah. If I can't do that, then I have her play with something mm -hmm. and I sit next to her so she knows I'm right there and I'll pop my AirPods in and listen to a podcast. Yeah. Like do something yeah. to just yeah. get away even if yeah. you can't physically get away. Oh yeah. Hey, listen, um, going out for coffee, just grabbing a latte. I mean, I've got this great star, not Starbucks, uh, an independent coffee shop down the street from me. So if I can, that literally makes my day. The act of like going, getting a coffee, taking it back to my car. I don't even sit there and enjoy it. I'm driving. It's like no. on, on the school run, I'll do it, but it literally, it lifts my mood. It's the best, yeah. it's the best $8, <laughs> sometimes $10. Um, I know. So I was just going to say, financially, that also could not make sense. Like if you're trying mm -hmm. to save money, that might not be a possibility. So mm -hmm. I've been in that boat before too, where like a Starbucks is too much. Like that's, I can't yeah. afford that. So yeah. what I would do when Stella was little and I was working from home is mm -hmm. I would make a coffee from home and I would strap her in a car, in a, in a stroller. Mm -hmm. And I would just take a walk around the neighborhood with my coffee mm -hmm. from home. It's the okay. same concept of like, my kid is, is secure. Oops. Yeah. My kid is secure and I am unplugging in some way. Yeah. Um, and, you know, again, going on to another tip, build mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And you need, you need yeah. people. And a lot yeah. of people we've talked about um, don't have people embedded. Like they may not be close to family. They may not have a husband. Maybe they're a single mom. Yeah, find so. people for your tribe, and that may be online, like the Momversation yeah. Club. Mm -hmm. um, it may be online communities on Facebook groups. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, for me, I'm building a community of moms right now, and it's difficult. Like, a, mm -hmm. making a mom friend's really tough. But we're, yeah. we're all in the same space, and if you can make one, that break could not be a break so much as it's just gathering with someone. So maybe yeah. if both of your toddlers are unruly. Um, yeah. You just secure them into a room and you two can just like reminisce on how unruly they are, like, and have yes. that little social interaction. I think, I think it really helps if the person that you're making a friendship with can relate to you in some way as well. So try and find other people who are in your situation, you know, who are in yeah. your boat, who, you know, if you tell about, you know, you share whatever that's gone on in your day with them, they're not like, oh my God you know, I can't relate to that. They're like, yeah, oh, well, listen to this. So this happened to us yesterday. And then you're like, oh God, it's not just me. It's not just me with the terrible child or, you know, with the relationship or with being a single parent. It's not just me. So it's nice if you are able to find someone who is living your life. It's just, it's a huge comfort, honestly. I, I've always found that. 
Yeah, yeah. And I've talked about another podcast of like how I built community with my daughter when she was little at mommy and me groups and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's been more difficult here because people are more spread out. It's kind of more of a rural area. Um, and so I'm meeting people, but it's like one friend at mommy and me group and then one friend at the library yeah. and then one friend here. And I feel a little bit like I'm assembling the Avengers because I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> okay, this gal is here and she's hilarious. And I think she would get along with this gal, but I don't know if she'd get along with that gal. I'm like, how can I get them all in the same room so that we can all be friends yeah, and start difficult. building a group? Yeah. Yeah. So finding your community is huge. People who get you, who get it and who you can share the hardness with. Um, and then my last thing is just in that same vein, find an outlet. Um, mm -hmm. so many moms, when I pulled that audience question of like, what's the hardest part, it's the, um, it's the isolation for sure, but yes. it's also that, um, they lose, they feel like they're losing themselves in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. so it's really important that you find something you're passionate about mm -hmm. and you cling on to that shit for dear life. And it does not need to be a money maker. It does not need to be something that's a set schedule. It could be something that you're just you, it makes you happy. Um, yeah. maybe it's, it's, it's running with your little one in a stroller. Maybe it's painting, blogging, doing something like this, where you're starting something creative, a Facebook yeah. group, things like that. Find something you can link into and latch onto. That's not a part of your motherhood. That is just yours. And, and did you do that Claire? Like when you were, cause I I've always had Yes, something like I've always had like a work from home type situation, like some sort yeah. of side hustle. I've never just done motherhood without something else like hobby wise. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've been the same. I, you know, I've tried to maintain some sort of work connection, not necessarily with, you know, uh, the office as it were. I've done my own project. So I've always done that just to keep my because I, I love my job, just to keep my creative juices flowing, I guess. So yeah. I, I have always done that. Um, for me, walking and Pilates have been my outlets that I love doing both of those things. And, you know, going back to when my girls were little, I was able to build some really great friendships through, you know, mum and yeah. toddler groups or whatever. And, and actually one of those people that I met when my eldest was just a toddler, She's one of my best friends to this day. And so I think if you don't need a lot of people, you just need the right people. So a couple yeah. of people who just get you are worth far more than 20 people who are high maintenance and who, you know, to stay in touch with them, it's, it's, it's a struggle, it's effort. Yeah, and then for those who... Um... For those who are in the stay-at-home mom group, not by choice, but are by finances, yeah. and they have a career that yeah. they're very passionate about and like love, um, there mm -hmm. is, like we talked about earlier, that gap of like time where you do, you're doing a job, like this is a job, yeah. make no mistakes yeah. about it. But yeah. to an employer, unfortunately, it's still a resume gap. That mm -hmm. hobby, that thing that's just you, maybe that's freelance. Maybe that's something where yeah. you're doing something in your career vein to keep that muscle memory of it. Um, but not necessarily at a nine to five and maybe not even necessarily for payment. I know when I was a writer, um, I would do a lot of like just freelance type blog posts and stuff for different people just to keep my like writing edge so that I yes. didn't lose that part yes. of myself. Yeah. And I've done that over the years too. And that is a great, a great tip because if you're not doing that thing regularly, whether or not you're getting paid for it, whether or not you're in the actual office as it were, it doesn't matter because at some stage you may wanna go back to that. And if you've had this massive break, not only from the office, but also from doing that thing, your confidence will have, you know, you'll just not feel as confident because your your skills won't be as sharp. So that's a great tip. So yeah, yeah. And we'll yeah. There was a lot of people that responded that said, um, I was a stay at home mom, a lot of former stay at home moms. So right. what I'm noticing is, is when the kids are young and aren't mm -hmm. in school, that's when the majority of stay at home momness happens. Yeah. And a lot of people, um, specifically the ones I polled, mm -hmm. they went back to work once their youngest child was in grade school. Mm -hmm. So 
there might be a possibility. Maybe you don't think it now. Maybe you're not sure. Um, Mm -hmm. You might just keep whatever talents you have outside of motherhood fresh because you just don't know if you're going to go back to work, Um, especially if it was a financial decision. Like you, you probably are. Yes. Um, So yeah, just keeping that fresh, keeping that eye open for opportunities and things like that is really important. Yeah. One other positive and one other tip I would just mention as well. So although being a stay-at-home mom can be a really difficult transition to make, like we've already discussed, it can also open doors to things that you wouldn't, you weren't able to even contemplate because you were in this busy nine to five or whatever hours you used to work. So you didn't have the energy or time. Yes. You didn't have the energy or time to actually, you know, launch this thing that you've always wanted. So I would also encourage people that are stay-at-home moms, but who do want to have some form of career or need to have some form of career because they they need the money. Maybe if there's that one thing that you've been wanting to do, but you've just never got around to it, you've never, you know, been in a position to because you've always been employed full time, maybe now is the time to start looking into that too. Because, you know, you can just spend an hour a week, a couple of hours a week, whatever time you have. And so, you know, being a stay at home mom can also open doors because it allows you that freedom of actually exploring a potential different avenue that you just couldn't do when you were working full time. So true, Claire. And then, you know, finally, just the positives of being a a stay at home mom, you get to watch your little like grow and and be there for every, uh, every one of the firsts, every big thing. Um, there it's not, I've done both. I've done working mom. I've been a stay at home mom. Um, there's something really rewarding about like really watching someone, um, like watching someone watching your child work on something every single day and not do it. And then they get the skill and you're like, I've been seeing you for weeks. Try to do that. That's so great that you've been able to do it. Like it's just, it's different. And there's a lot of advantages to being a stay at home parent, but I think slowing down, um, as parents were so damn busy, um, when you do slow down and just get on the ground with your kid and like play with them, it opens up something so different in you. And Mm -hmm. for working parents, like you can find that same space on the weekends, like finding that time just to slow down with them Mm -hmm. and just sit with them and be with them in their space, whether they're little littles or maybe they're older, um, just being with them in their zone of whatever that is. And that brings us to the end of another episode of the Mumversation Club. And if you've enjoyed today's show, which we hope you have, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a review. Your support helps us reach even more moms and build a stronger village. Until next time. Bye.